And I remember once he actually came home early and surprised us. He didn't beat his, beep his horn. And he went to, to Shakira, my cousin's school. She was younger than me by maybe about three years. And he went by and visited her school and surprised her. And she was just there being a kid, talking with her friends there. But when he saw her doing that, oh my goodness. So the minute she got home, he beat the living hell out of her. And then the, when we got home from school, he was bragging about how he caught her in school and that she was carrying on. And I bet you she'll never do that again. And Shakira was just terrified of him. So I remember one day when he, you know, Shakira was, was just over the fence of the neighbor's house talking to the, to the neighbor, just being a kid. And you, she heard Uncle Clive's horn, beep, beep, which means he was on his way. And she jumped the fence. And this was fence said to be like four and a half, five feet tall. It was a pretty tall fence. And she, she was a little kid. And she had, you know, she jumped the fence and then she, and got over there and ran into the bedroom, changed her clothes, pulled the blanket over her head and pretended like she was sleeping because she was so terrified of him. Um, you know, and you know, so th that's the sort of interaction that we had with them. However, when Uncle Clive was not around, and before we even go to that point, um, I remember telling my wife recently that, you know, when she was on vacation, and I said, oh, you're going to be home. And I said, I had to remind myself that that was a good thing, that she was home, because I remember when Uncle Clive was home from vacation, it was a fucking nightmare and you were terrified the whole time you're walking around on eggshell being scared about whether or not you're going get, to get hit. And so I remember coming to the United States and we were watching those talk shows and they were talking about abuse. And we were just looking at each other laughing because when we were listening to some of the, what they were calling abuse, I'm like, you guys don't know what abuse is. I mean, this guy that we live with, Uncle Clive, was, was an animal who just, you know, you'd have bruises on your body from just the brutalization that he did to us. And, um, but however, when he was not there, you know, it was just me and Auntie Barbara and Shakira. And one of the things that was really cool about Auntie Barbara was that she was very down to earth. And so she never treated me like I was a child. She treated me like a person. And so when she talked to me, she would talk to me like an individual and, and she would listen carefully to what I had to say. And she always wanted me what my thoughts were about something. And so it gave me a sense of confidence that what I had to say mattered. And over the next five years that I lived with her, she helped me, like I said, corrected, you know, the deficits that I had along the way. Because remember, I'd lost a year and a half of schooling. But the thing that I remember most about her was just her ability to make you feel like an individual. And she was so cool about it that years later, when Wayne finally came to and lived with us, you know, all the kids, Wayne was a very popular kid in school. And so he had a lot of friends and the, his friends would come over the house to hang out with us and they would love coming over. This was the house that all his friends would like to come in, like to come over and hang out because my Aunt Barbara, we call her Auntie Barbara, was so laid back and cool about it. So they call her Auntie Barbara too. And um, 
you know, one of the, the, the things is that I remember Wayne living there and he, he had all these friends and, you know, we were, we were really, and Wayne had a dagger that he carried with him and he was about, you know, almost 16 years old at that point and he was in really good shape. He was very fit and he, of course, Wayne could always fight. And I remember we were all very nervous the entire time that we lived there with Wayne because we thought sooner or later, him and Uncle Clive are going to get into it. And we were worried that Wayne was going to kill Uncle Clive because he, you know, because neither one of them was going to back, were going to back down. And at the time, I remember that beating a child with a fan belt was a thing. Can you believe that? The fan belt from your car. So these little bastards back in the day would think of all different ways to be able to beat a child. And one of them, they got to the point where you use a fan belt. And a fan belt, when it hits you, it, it instantly would cut your skin. And Uncle Clive got the fan belt and he decided that he was going to do, you know, he was going to hit Wayne and he was planning on doing it. I remember him saying, oh yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going to take care of him with it. And we were thinking, my Aunt Barbara was telling him, you know, I don't think that's such a good idea. You, I don't think you want to do that. And in the back of her mind, she was thinking, this is not going to end well because if Uncle Clive does get the, get, get the upper hand, he's, you know, Wayne is going to take revenge. He's going to wait till you're sleeping. He's not going to let it go like that. Or he had lots of friends and he might get his friends to beat the living shit out of Uncle Clive. But Uncle Clive didn't realize that he was living in this world where he thought that he was the only one who really, you know, had the ability to, to create harm. And so I remember him, you know, um, one day coming home when we got home saying that he hit Wayne a couple of times with a fan belt, you know, and, you know, we talked to Wayne later and he was like, yeah, I took it, but, you know, and, um, you know, maybe someday Wayne will tell his story as well, but, but it, you can tell when he hit Wayne that it didn't, it wasn't a lot of hits and he thought about that maybe this was not a good idea. So I don't think he is, he ever hit, I don't think he ever hit Wayne again ever after that. But that 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 time was just a very painful, volatile time in our in our lives, in my life at least, that I remember. And one of the things I remember from that is is just being a hated bullies, hated people who were in who thought that they had power over you, who could do harm to you. And I, and since that time, I actually literally fought the bully. I'll tell you the next story, stories that, that will have, but I fought the bully pretty much most of my life. I stood up for other people, um, you know, because of that interaction. In, in fact, I remember that one day, you know, he turned his abuse from us to start to beat on Auntie Barbara. And I remember saying to him, I said, you know, they were talking and I said, well, you didn't have to hit her. And of course, when he did that, when I said that, he reached over for something that, that was there, like a figurine. And by the time he turned around, I ran out the door and jumped the fence. And man, I didn't know that that guy could move that fast. He threw that thing. He almost could have killed me with that thing, but I jumped the fence onto the other side. And I think at that point, you know, it was such a mess. But by that time, my uncle, uh, my aunt had moved across the street and so actually, we, you know, I, I had to, they told me that I have to go stay across the street with my, with my other aunt for a while because otherwise Uncle Clive was going to kill us. So, um, so that's ex uh, what I did. And I did that for, for maybe a week or two until, um, my brother Colin came down to talk to Uncle Clive and also, um, my uncle, my uncle came and had a conversation with, with Uncle Clive as well about what he was doing to his sister. I'll tell you to that to you in the next episode, but um, you know when we talk more about surviving Hitler. My name is Bruce Wayne, and thanks for watching. Talk to you on the next uh, podcast.